Wow, it's dark in here, hey? <laughs> Greetings to all of you who are one with me. I really uh, thank you for, for sharing your precious time with us today. Uh, my name is Karen Joseph, and I'm, and I'm blessed to be the co-founder and CEO of Reconciliation Canada. We're in a watershed moment in our collective history. There's unprecedented momentum for reconciliation in Canada. Nearly every context of Canadian society is ready to move meaningful reconciliation forward. In our schools, in our public and private institutions, in our communities, and in our families. But what is reconciliation? Is it rights and title? Is it restitution or atonement for past wrongs? Is it the implementation of the 94 TRC calls to action? or UNDRIP. Who's responsible? The government, churches, schools, corporations? How do we translate the optimism into meaningful and lasting change? Change that results in the improved li livelihood and well-being of Indigenous peoples. Change that builds resilient communities that allows all our children to achieve their optimum potential. These are the emerging questions that are coming behind this incredible momentum that we've built over these past few years. In order to answer some of those questions, I'm going to tell you a story about where it all started. Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission came about as a result of the largest class action lawsuit in the history of this country. It was put forward by survivors, some of whom their families had been torn apart, who had suffered years of alcoholism, who still, even to this day, live on the streets. And those survivors when they won that largest class action lawsuit in the history of this country, they didn't say, oh, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to go and I'm going to spend it on new cars or a new house or a new whatever. They said, we're going to take this money and we're going to give you $70 million dollars to fund a Truth and Reconciliation Commission for Canada so that our children know why we are here in this situation today. So that this story that has never been told can be told again. And so that those children can walk down the streets with dignity. Those survivors in the context of Canadian society, had nothing. Namuyu, we are all one. It's not just a saying, all my relations. It's a value. It's a covenant. It's a way of being. And it represents for me what it means is reconciliation. Canadians pride themselves on the values of peace, justice, equality, diversity. We think about ourselves as like we can use those values without acting them, without embedding them into who we are as a people. It's like being an Olympic athlete one year and then thinking you never have to exercise again for the next 20 years and you're still an Olympic athlete? It's a way of being. It's a way of living. And it's something that my heroes, those survivors, taught us. It's a word, Namuyut, that resonates with Indigenous people and multicultural people, multi-faith people around the world all my relations. 
It doesn't matter whether you're Irish or you're Scottish or you're Jewish or you're Kwakwakiwak or you're Coast Salish or you're Squamish or wherever you come from. It's a unifying factor. It's a deeply held value with Indigenous communities that recognizes that we have a permanent connection to each other and to the territories upon which we live. It's the start of almost every traditional gathering I've ever been to in my life. It reminds us of the covenants that we have made with one another, how we show up in those times. We don't always show up in our best selves. Some days we're tired. Some days the kids are just a little too much. You know? <laughs> and school's just overloaded. And, and you can't show up in the way that you want to show up to. But when you come like this in this circle, and you say, whatever strength, whatever courage, whatever passion you have in that moment, you stand up and you give it to the people. That's what living your values is about. That's what those survivors did. They showed us. They made a difference in this country. A handful of those survivors brought us to this moment today. Any lasting social change begins with self. The civil rights movement, the women's rights movement, the reconciliation movement. Somebody said, we need to do something. And who's responsible? Not the government, not the churches, not the institutions, not the corporations. I am responsible for the future that I leave for myself and for my children. And so reconciliation to me starts, started first within, believing in the people around me, believing in the people that had hurt me, believing in the, in the fact that Canadians actually could live those values of justice, of peace, of equality, of love, of our shared humanity. And so we show up every day and we keep moving forward. And some days we need to be held up and other days we can rise up strong and lift up many, many people at the same time. So when we talk about social change, it starts here. It starts with self first. And only then can we reflect out to society and engage everybody else in the work that we're trying to do. So I'm going to ask you, in 10, 15 years, maybe for some of us longer, you know, I'm a little older, so. Yeah. When a five-year-old grandchild comes up to you and asks you, in genuine wonder, Grandma, when that happened, what did you do? I don't ever want to have to say nothing. So that's my call to action to you, is to get involved, to use your influence, to move. Those survivors stood up with nothing and created this movement. Us, with all our privilege, with all our knowledge, with all our connections, with all our abilities, can truly change Canada's future for the better, not just for Indigenous people, but for all our children. Now is the time to show them, our neighbours, and even other countries across the world stage, that Canada knows how to get this right. From multi-ethnic playgrounds all the way to the world stage, now is the time to achieve great things for all of us. So I invite you humbly on that journey with me, and I thank you for being here today. Gala Kessler. <laughs>